The Athlon 64X2 and the Pentium D were the first x86-based dual-core processors. Each of these CPUs offer dual cores, but they each do it in a very different way. Intel didn't have a true dual-core processor ready at the time. The Pentium D on the right is actually two Pentium 4 dies on a single chip. So imagine this. You own a car that gets terrible fuel economy, hardly has any power, and tends to run hot and overheat. So to fix it, you have someone drop in a second identical engine. Now your fuel economy is even worse, and it overheats more often. But hey, you got a little bit more power. That was the Penny MD. It was a true hack job. AMD's Athlon 64X2, on the other hand, had two processor cores built into a single die. This allowed for much faster internal communication, amongst other things. It was a far more efficient design that actually ran cooler and used less power. The CPUs we're going to benchmark are the Pentium D945 against an Athlon X2 5000 Plus. Both are released around the same time. However, the Pentium D is a 95 watt CPU, whereas the Athlon's only a 65 watt. The Pentium runs at 3.4 GHz and has a much larger amount of L2 cache. The Athlon is clocked slower, has less cache, but again uses less power and has a much more efficient architecture. Now, just as a side note, because the AM2 motherboard I'm using refuses to detect anything over 4 gigs of RAM, uh, both platforms will be running Windows 7 with 4 gigs of RAM, and doing this just to keep it fair. Right off the bat, the Athlon scores about 100 points higher in Passmark CPU tests. Some things the Pentium did better at, but overall the Athlon ranked higher. That is, until we get to the memory test. Most of the scores are somewhat close, except for the memory retests. These are far above the Athlon. I'm assuming they mean system memory, but maybe it's supposed to be cache? I'm not really sure without looking into it, but uh, maybe somebody could comment down below if they know what's going on here. Now, 7-Zip had similar results on both, but as I found out from earlier benchmarks, it seems that 7-Zip uses both threads to compress a single file. This would slow it down considerably, as one thread would be basically waiting for the other one to finish. But regardless, both systems had similar performance and finished within about 5 seconds of each other. Cinebench was a different story though, as the Athlon finished 5 minutes before the Pentium, scoring 197 versus the Pentium's 166. In Handbrake, once again, the Athlon pulled ahead of the Pentium by about half an FPS. This allowed it to finish the encode about 11 minutes sooner. Heaven ran about the same on both, but I noticed the Pentium D didn't like scene changes, and it would stutter, you know, a bit more often than the Athlon. This seems to show in the final score. The minimum and maximum FPS of the Pentium were higher than the Athlon, but the Athlon still had a higher score in average FPS. GTA San Andreas was released about a year before either of these CPUs, so it definitely would be something that would have been played on either. In the living room, the FPS seems to be about the same, but once we get out and start driving around, the Athlon definitely pulls ahead. As you can see, the Athlon is almost always 10 to 20 FPS higher than the Pentium. GTA 4. As usual, here are the settings that I use for the tests. In the beginning, just standing in the street, both CPUs show similar performance, but with the Athlon edging ahead by just a couple FPS. However, once I started driving around, I noticed the Athlon felt much smoother and had a higher average FPS. The in-game benchmark actually seems to show similar results. Both would stutter and freeze around the same times, but when there was motion, the Athlon kept a much higher FPS. As shown in the results, the Athlon scored a little over 5 FPS higher. And with GTA 5, right off the bat, the Athlon felt smoother. Keeping an eye on the FPS showed the Athlon was always higher than the Pentium.
Something else I noticed, when I tested this Pen EMD with this game on Windows 10, it ran smooth, but the textures would drop out as it couldn't load them fast enough. But this time around on Windows 7, the road textures loaded fine, however the gameplay wasn't smooth, often stuttering and freezing while textures loaded. All in all though, both were similar with the Athlon pulling ahead. Portal 2 ran great as usual, however I noticed that the Athlon often ran about 20 FPS faster than the Pen EMD. I tested YouTube using Firefox with all hardware acceleration disabled. Starting off with 480, they both play great. The only drop frames were right from the beginning when the video first starts, but after that they play fine. At 720, both CPUs are pushed to their max, but the video is still fairly smooth and watchable with some, you know, occasional drop frames. Now at 1080, this is where it all falls apart for both. Um, I'll let you decide which, which did better. So in all these tests, the Athlon actually performed anywhere between slightly to moderately better than the Pen EMD. And in some situations, you wouldn't even notice the difference. So big deal, right? Well, remember that the Athlon is running at 2.6 gigahertz, 800 megahertz slower than the 3.4 gigahertz Pen EMD it was benched against. So what would that look like if we ran a Pen EMD that was a closer speed or match to the Athlon's clock speed? Well, I did just that. The slowest Pen EMD that I have is a 2.8. It's the same Pressler Core version with the same specs, the only difference really uh, should be a lower multiplier. Here's an example of just a couple of the benchmarks. In Handbrake, as you saw before, the Athlon pulled ahead by about half an FPS and encoded the file around 10 minutes faster than the uh, Pen EMD 3.4. However, against the Pen EMD 2.8, the Athlon was about 1.5 FPS faster and encoded the file about 35 minutes faster. Cinebench showed similar results. Against the 3.4, the Athlon was about five minutes faster. However, against the 2.8, it was about 12 minutes faster. Here are the bar graphs showing the results of the three CPUs. Now, from looking at these, it makes me think that to find a the Pen EMD that would perform exactly the same as this Athlon, uh, it would have to be at least 3.6 to 3.8 gigahertz. Basically clocked 1 to 1.2 gigahertz higher than the Athlon is. And another thing, I ran the test multiple times and the 3.4 gigahertz Pen EMD always had that high score in pass marks memory test. Even though the FSB cache and everything else on the 2.8 is the same as the 3.4, it scores lower. If anyone watching has any ideas of what I'm missing here, please comment below. If you made it this far, uh, again, I want to thank you for watching. Um, I plan on doing much more with this CPU as well as other AMD processors from this time period. Some ideas I have are, you know, a Phenom against a Core 2 Duo, or maybe how much faster was the Athlon versus the Athlon version 2. Uh, also, I'd like to make more in-depth videos um, and not do just quick benchmarks. I still will do quick benchmarks, but... Uh, might have a video to go along with it that's more in depth. So anyways, I uh, hope everyone is doing great and I hope to see you next time. All right, bye-bye.